In two days, Joseph Schooling will fly off to Virginia in the U.S. to reunite with his former coach, Sergio Lopez. Now, Schooling worked with Lopez at the Bulls School in Florida from 2010 to 2014. Now, Schooling also turned to Lopez at the 2016 Rio Olympics along with his University of Texas coach, Eddie Rees. In an exclusive, Schooling told Asti that his decision to team up with Lopez again came after a lacklustre 2019 season where he was heavily criticised for his performances, fitness and physique. Here's what Schooling had to say. I didn't get angry with it because in part it's true, like I was out of shape and I wasn't where I needed to put myself to at least give my, myself a chance to perform. And you can't run away from that. At the same time, did it fuel me? Yes, absolutely. But also, I think the most important thing is I was sick of swimming so slow. Like, you know, I was sick of feeling like a slob that I really wanted to make the right change and not because you know, a bunch of people were on me about that. Now that's just a snippet of what Schooling told sports correspondent David Lee, who's here now in the studio with me. Welcome, David. Hi, Harunto. Now, David, what do you make of this move? Is it a good one for schooling. I think it is and more importantly he and his team of coaches in Singapore think so too. There have been questions about whether he should have stayed in the States after graduating. Personally I think it would have been good for him simply because there would be more swimmers around his level to push him over there. But after talking to him earlier this week I realised it was more than that. You know, in, in the US he could train hard and then take his mind off swimming once he was out of the pool. In Singapore, everywhere he went, all people wanted to know is how are you doing uh, in the pool? How, how are you swimming? What is your times? He, he got tired of that and it's an accu accumulation of factors, you know. He admitted to taking his foot off the gas uh, after winning the Olympics in 2016. He didn't want to return to the pool and he fell out of love with, with swimming. I think most of us can identify with that, right? We work hard at our jobs and when we go home, the last thing we want to talk about is work. Yeah. Again, mm. sometimes we get burnt out from work and we don't even feel like going to work the next day. So the big difference uh, between Olympic champion Joe and the rest of us average Joes of course. <laughs> is that we don't have the entire country or even the swimming world watching us and critic critiquing our work and our weight. Mm. So I think it's important that uh, Joe goes back to an environment that made him love swimming made him love racing and that he can rediscover and reignite this passion and hunger again. It's a bonus that he has someone like Sergio uh, who treats him like his own son to, to guide him and coach him again. Mm. Now David, Schooling had two coaches in Singapore uh, here, coaching national head coach and performance director Stephen Widmer as well as the national training centre head coach Gary Tan. But what wasn't working uh, out for him? Okay, like Joe has said, his coaching team here are not the problem. We need to get things straight. The credit has to go to the swimming, uh, Singapore Swimming Association's high performance team. So that's like you mentioned, Stefan Whitmer, Gary Tan and even Sonia Porter for being open to this idea of him going back to the States. Um, I think they are great coaches who have brought the best out of um, the other local swimmers most recently at the SEA Games where they won a lot of goals. Uh, but like everywhere else in sport, athletes have their own unique preferences. Uh, you look at golfers, you look at tennis players, they try different things to find out what works best for them. Uh, sometimes uh, they just need that, that own unique environment. Mm. Sometimes athletes lose that bit of uh, hunger and drive after winning a big title. And I guess that's the main problem for, for Joe. So on that note, David, does Cooling still have that winning mentality that can possibly withstand the pressure he's facing right now? For sure. Uh, I have mm. no doubt uh, Joe is a, is a fighter. Who in his who, is in, who in his right mind gets up so early, 4 and 5 a.m. To, to train and, and puts in puts himself through such a punishing routine, uh, if not to win. You know, uh, making such a change now is, is, a, is a huge statement uh, that shows that he wants to fight until the end and do whatever he can to win. There's ample proof over the years that um, the more people say he cannot do something, the more he, he wants to go out there and accomplish it. Let's be honest, uh, who, who thought he could, he could win Singapore's first Olympic gold medal? Personally, I thought the best he could do was to win a medal, but he, he went out there and proved prove all of us wrong. So the situation is similar now. I think with, with his recent struggles, not many people believe he can retain his title or, or some may think he, he cannot even reach the final, but I think he thrives when he feels that 
he needs to make some people eat eat their words. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, David. You know, for coming on to share a bit more about the exclusive sure. interview that you had with uh, Joseph Schooling. Certainly, we hope for the best for of him, course. and certainly things to turn around for him, right? Uh, especially with uh, the upcoming uh, Olympics that's happening as well. Right. Uh, you know, hopefully things uh, do look up for him as well. Now you can read uh, David's exclusive with Joseph Schooling on StraitsTimes.com. Now, those are our top stories for today. For more news and videos, do log on to straightstimes.com. Once again, I'm Harianto. Stay safe, have a pleasant weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.